what's going on what's going on this is Robert Sims with today's peace talk <sighs> peace talk I'm inviting you to grab a hold of God's peace <clears throat> God says he has a peace that you don't have to understand even in the midst of trials and tribulations he said I got some peace that will keep you keep your heart keep your mind Keep your heart, keep your mind. We need our minds kept. We need our hearts kept. And the only one that can keep you in perfect peace is when we put our mind and keep our mind stayed on him. <clears throat> Jesus was in the boat. There was a storm going on and he was chilling. He wasn't even disturbed at all. In fact, he was asleep. And the Bible says he was chilling. And the Bible says that the people that were around him were in turmoil. <clears throat> they were upset. They were perplexed by their situation. And so they went and woke up the master and said, Master, don't you care what, what's going on? Don't you care about what's going on around us? Jesus, don't you care that people are dying in the streets? Don't you care? Don't you care? We can uh, equate that to what's going on around us. The storms of racism going on around us right now. And some people are asking that. Does Jesus even care? Doesn't he see what's going on? Doesn't he see that? Jesus woke up. He, uh, oh, what, what's, what, what, what's going on? What, what's going on? Oh, oh, come on. Peace be still. He spoke to the, he spoke to the storm. And disrupted what was going on. He's a he 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 became a disruption to the storm, and said, "Peace be still." He spoke to it, and then guess what he did? He rebuked his uh, followers. He said, "Oh, ye of little faith." In other words, he said, "What's wrong with y'all? Why did y'all do something about this? Why didn't you do something about the storm that you're in right now?" Instead of complaining and running to me crying, he said, what are you doing? Why aren't you speaking to the storm that you're dealing with? Why aren't you speaking to the storms of racism? Don't complain about the storm. Speak to the storm. We're going to begin to speak to the storm. So right now, <clears throat> we declare the, a disruption to every racist system in America and around the world because we speak to that right now in, in, in the authority of a Christian, a man and woman of God, if you're a person of God, we declare peace to the storm. We declare a disruption to every racist system. We declare disruption to every racist uh, authoritative system, every from the president all the way down to the person next door. We speak disruption to that. And we speak the life of God. We speak the, the unity of God. We speak God's uh, in intervention in every situation. And again, as I said, we pray, but we also move into action. So that does not take the, the place of prayer. That does not take the place of moving into action. It's not either or, it's and. It's not either or, it's and. And so we're going to add to our faith some works. So we speak, uh, and, and did you know that this is the most, no, I don't want to say most, this is the largest civil rights demonstration in history. That, first of all, I think I said it yesterday, that there have been dis, uh, disruptions, I'll say that. The, the protests, protests are a disruption. It comes to disrupt your normal life. It comes to disrupt your uh, the business as usual because regular conversations aren't getting through. And so the disruption of protest comes to disrupt to get the attention of people that are not listening. And so they came to disrupt. So there's been in every state of the union a disruption, at least one protest. And guess what? There have been protests in 18 different countries around the same issue of police brutality. So this thing is not getting smaller. It's getting larger and larger. And 
I think people are committed. I know I'm one of them. I'm committed to, to move forward in this issue until there is a change. There is a commitment, not just a weekend protests and we're putting on Facebook and things like that. First of all, vote. Second of all, if you're led to join an organization that has more, that are maybe more articulate about this issue than you know to be. And so I say that to say this disruption comes, the protests are disruptions. They come to disrupt the status quo of people's lives and come to interrupt them. People don't like that. People don't like interruptions. I don't. I don't. I really don't. I don't like to be interrupted. If I'm in the middle of something, don't interrupt me. That's too bad. My wife tells me that sometimes you got to get interrupted because I got to say something. Cool. Okay, okay. That's what we're saying now. This thing, this movement, it's a movement. It's a movement, global movement. And so God, is, I believe God is breathing on it and breathing in it. Not, not the riots. Not the destruction. Don't don't skip past why we're talking about it. Just thinking about the disruption. You want to skip past why the thing is even an uh, issue to run to the, well, these people are rioting. So what? Shut up. Shut up. Go back to the main issue. The main issue. People are dying all over the country. Not in one place. They're not all criminals. That's easy. To push that and make everybody a criminal. Everybody's criminalized. But guess what? If anybody else was criminals, if there was a white person doing the exact same thing, the criminality would not even be an issue. But to justify it, we want to make them a criminal, even if they have a criminal record. That's cool. But if they're a criminal, they still have due process. And you don't kill somebody on the street. That's not due process. So I want to end this with, with a word of peace. I speak peace over the minds and hearts, particularly of our African-American people. But guess what? It's not just African-Americans that's disturbed by this. It's not. I have, we have lots of white Christian friends, lots of white people, lots of Hispanic people, lots of people that are disturbed by that. Because you can't see a man dying on the street. And not think how that could be your nephew. That could be your uncle. That could be your dad. That could be your brother or sister. Even though he doesn't have the same color that you are, that you have, you see that that person could have been part of my family. That could be my neighbor. And I can't continue to see people killed senselessly and not speak up. Because at some point, at some point, your silence becomes betrayal. Your silence becomes betrayal at some point. When you're quiet in those conversations with your family and your loved ones and the people that are look like you and they say something off and is blatantly racist or subtly racist, you have overt, ra overt racism and you have covert racism where you use cold words like law and order and criminals and all those different things. That's cold word for black people. In case you didn't know it. So, but when you have those conversations and you don't speak up, you have a responsibility to speak up in those private conversations. So I want to speak, uh, end with a word of peace. I'll speak peace over the minds and hearts of anybody that has, that are dealing with this and their hearts are broken like mine. Their hearts are broken, especially if you're a Christian. You're like, What? And so I speak peace over you right now. I speak peace. Sometimes God allows disruption and, uh, and a shaking of your peace in this sense to move you out of lethargy and complacency and move into activation. Action. Move into action. So this is Robert Sims with uh, Peace Talk. Well, I come to stir you up on, on your pure mind to be at peace, but move into action. That's not, uh, uh, those are not opposing points. 
You can be at peace in one sense, but you also can be disrupted in another that said, I'm not satisfied with life as it is. We can't keep allowing our, our, our country to be disruptive and allow people to be killed in the streets. So do something about it. All right. This is Robert. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye.